Tonight, Fox 4 investigates a problem we first spotted from space. A viewer sent us this Google Maps satellite image of an industrial site in North Texas with a curious red stain leading into the Trinity River. We uncovered a polluted plot of land right on the banks of the river. And we also found this toxic problem carries a big price tag for taxpayers. From above, this plot of land in Fort Worth looks like a typical industrial site, but its proximity to the Trinity has the attention of environmental activist Luke Metzger. The Trinity River is incredibly important to the state of Texas. Metzger works for Environment Texas, an advocacy group based in Austin. The group has ranked the Trinity in the top third of most polluted waterways in the state. So when we showed him the site's drainage trough with a deep red stain that caught our eye, he agreed. It definitely raises eyebrows. The trough is supposed to channel rainwater from Brennan Avenue through what's known as the Brennan site near Northside Drive into the Trinity River. But a Fox 4 investigation uncovered more than just rainwater in the ground. The city of Fort Worth owns all the land marked here in blue and stores impounded vehicles and industrial products on the site. We have some core consultants that we work with all the time. Brandon Bennett is the director of code compliance for the city. We started by asking about that red coloring in the trough. That could be any number of things. It could be red algae. It could be um, oxidation, um, you know, from rust, from the metals that are in the ground. Uh, any number of things can lead to that, that rust color that occurs out there. But it's what you can't see that's a bigger concern. Yellow lines on the city's own map indicate groundwater contamination. Yellow arrows indicate underground flow. As you know, that um, there's a lot of stuff in the ground at, at the Brennan site. It, um, there are just a lot of things that, that have contributed to the, the, the ground contamination that we have there today. Stuff in the ground includes arsenic, benzene, and various petroleum products identified by the city through groundwater testing. But how did those hazardous chemicals get there? Well, we found a problem dating back to the early 1900s. Historical photos show large industrial tanks filled with petroleum products. In 1969, the site became a landfill, marked here in red. Around that time, the city opened the Brennan Service Center and more tanks were installed underground. But by 1990, the city started finding petroleum in the ground and Texas environmental regulators enrolled the site in its leaking petroleum tank remediation program. More on how that worked out later. The city spent more than $87,000 to remove nine tanks and shut down the landfill two years later. Fast forward to 2005, the year Sal Espino was elected to city council. The Brennan Service Center is in his district. It's a challenge because, uh, you know, as a council member, as a citizen, take very seriously uh, you know, environmental issues. In 05, 2,000 gallons of fuel from this tank released into the soil. Espino was on the council that approved more than 200 grand for that cleanup and tank repair alone. In 2009, the city moved the auto pound to this site. But later that year, the city discovered even more contaminated soil, forcing council to approve another half million dollars for cleanup. And in 2010, more oil pollution forced the city to spend $1.1 million to clean the site and pump out contaminated surface water. If you're following our math, that's more than $2 million over 25 years. Well, I'm encouraged that they've been dealing with the problem, that they've acknowledged there is a problem, they've attempted to solve the problem. However, it's, however, it's very frustrating that after 20 years, you know, they still haven't gotten to the bottom of it. A 2013 soil test yet again found contamination, and the city discovered high levels of toxic chemicals in the ground. According to the city, from August 2013 to December 2015, benzene and arsenic were detected above either the residential screening level or the commercial industrial screening level on a consistent basis. Arsenic and benzene showed up in more than half of the city's 21 groundwater monitoring wells on the site. One sample showed arsenic at 15 times the highest acceptable level by the state. Another detected benzene at more than 600 times the acceptable level. 
According to the World Health Organization, drinking contaminated water with arsenic or breathing in benzene can lead to cancer and other diseases. City officials insist the chemicals aren't getting into the drinking water or the air right now. They say if the chemicals in the ground aren't disturbed, workers and visitors are safe. The state agrees. In 26 years of remediation, state regulators have never ordered any corrective actions or fines. It's outrageous that uh, the state of Texas uh, hasn't uh, forced any corrective action, hasn't penalized the city, hasn't come in and provided the assistance to, to finally get to the bottom of this and, and stop the pollution. The city tells us it is ready to fix this problem once and for all. To look at uh, testing and, for, uh, and, and coming up with a remediation plan for uh, benzene and arsenic. So that's, you know, that's concerning. And so we've got to come up with a game plan to fully address the issue. But I would encourage every citizen. To Tuesday, City Council will vote on whether to hire a consultant to explore the idea of installing an underground filter. System and think of it uh, much like a uh, Brita water container. So we can't stop the groundwater from coming up and, and, and coming through this material. What we can do is we can collect it and run it through filters so that what little bit of it does end up into the Trinity River is even cleaner than what's getting to the river now. The city claims it has money in the bank for this ambitious project, but wasn't too clear about how much it will cost. What is clear is that this is the city's motivation. The Trinity River Vision Project, a massive future development nicknamed the River Walk of Fort Worth, and it's all dependent on a clean, usable, and safe waterway. As a green city, as a city that values the environment, we have to make significant investments in remediating environmental concerns, and this is certainly a top priority. It'll be part of our capital plan, and I think we're going to do whatever it takes to get it clean. All right, now the city still has four above ground petroleum storage tanks on the site now. None of them are leaking, and the problem that we're dealing with today all comes from historical contamination. All right, so a couple of questions, I guess. First, more on this filter system and what that's going to be like. And then my other thought isn't there a way that you could just dig up that area? And dig it up. It? Right. Yeah, that was one of the first things we asked. Why couldn't we dig this up much right. like they would a regular construction site? Sure. Well, the city says that this groundwater filter is the best option because digging out more dirt could simply disturb the contamination and then you potentially have more chemicals that are exposed at that point. So we'll have more on what the city is asking citizens to pay for at tomorrow night's council meeting. All right. Good story. Thanks, Brandon.